All right, and as you can see here, we're back at TCS. We got the third gen on the dyno. Let's get started. Hey everyone, that, that moment you just saw, you have no idea how sweet that was because that was a confirmation. That was the first camshaft that I have run an engine that I created entirely from scratch, not just calling up and say, hey, I want a 240 degree cam. No, every last point on that lobe, that lobe that I made asymmetric worked and it, it offered me something that I feel isn't really in the market. Um, and that's the ability to use a fairly lit, light spring rate and get good valve travel because I'm accounting for the actual motion at the valve instead of just drawing a typical valve lobe. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, here's another one. It doesn't look that asymmetric. Um, in fact, let me go grab a different one that looks more asymmetric here. This one's my biggest grind and you can kind of see it, hopefully it comes across in camera here, but this is a little softer than this. And it's all about managing that, uh, managing the energy, the reciprocating weight going up and down and not needing a whole lot of spring rate because extra spring rate is just lost energy. And the worst thing is not only is that energy lost, but instead it turns into heat right on the journals for the camshaft and you're, you're just risking damaging things. So this is just better all around. And at the end of the day, um, that dyno plot, if we look at it again, that lovely 240 wheel horsepower dyno plot, um, you know, it, it's, it worked. I'm going to 8,200 RPM. It should be safe to 85, 8,600. Um, and that's still with a margin. That's not like, you know, 8,650 is when the whole thing flies apart, but, the power was obviously going downhill at that point. I didn't see a whole bunch of point into continuing to go past that. So 8,200 it was. And I know most people here are watching this for entertainment, but I will be making a short run of the copies of those camshafts. Uh, I'm probably only going to make 10 at first because I don't know how many people are interested in this. Uh, you can follow the link in the description if you want to know more about buying them. But then also for the people that hadn't been following the rest of this series, um, I just kind of wanted to talk about what other modifications were done in order to get it to that power level. Um, first thing is there was no porting at all on the head. Um, and you know, this will never come across on camera. This is actually a different motor, but you know, same thing. This is another one that I made about 240 horsepower out of. You can, no, I'm sure you can't tell on camera that there's no porting. Um, at least that there's no minor porting. Um, and the first thing that you can see is, you can probably read this, it says 1AR. The 1AR intake is a slightly larger plenum, but the runners, both the long and the short runners, are exactly the same dimensions, best I can tell. Um, using the stock throttle body, and if you, look on this graph here. This is the log from when I pulled it on the dyno there. Um, the manifold vacuum is pulled right here and we're peaking out at about uh, a maximum restriction of about three to three and a half KPA. I unfortunately didn't get an exact atmospheric reference that day. So it's, it, it's hard to tell exactly what it was, but it was very, very small. Um, and the, the rest of that path is actually just the standard rubber boot and my fantastic velocity stack mass airflow combination part. Um, this thing has been such an amazing part. It's allowed us to make a lot more power on the 2AR and the 2GR. Um, so that's it for the intake side. And the exhaust side, uh, if you can believe it, is actually even simpler. So I just took my third gen MR2 swap header that you can see right here that was used exactly 100% as is and then about eight feet of two and a half inch pipe 
and somewhere towards the end of that there's a two and a half inch straight through muffler that's it that's all it took to make 240 horses i i really have to give credit to toyota on this because i i don't know what they had in mind for this motor but it's obvious that this motor there there must have been a goal um and i mean this thing's finished its production run so We'll never know what that is because it obviously didn't happen, but there must have been a goal that was beyond what they did with this thing. Because this thing's got, I mean, the exhaust port on this, they're, they're the equivalent cross-sectional area of a one and three quarter inch pipe. That's, that's huge for a motor that from the factory is making 188 horsepower at the flywheel. The, the intake's on right now. Um, actually, let me just let me just pop that off real quick so we can see with that popped off right we're a little over two and a quarter inches by a little over one and a half inches so that's that's huge <laughs> that's a giant chasm in there and by the way um i am running just the stock crankcase vent so there's a little bit of oil that comes out but it hasn't affected performance so i just run that on the race car just fine the other thing i want to talk about this is there's actually even more power in those cams um, not at the top end the the peak power is still going to be exactly the same but here is the vvti maps that i made you can see those spots on the intake and the exhaust. The intake goes to positive 40 and the exhaust goes to negative 40. Well, if you look in the previous video, if you've seen it, you'll remember that the intake valve at full advance was hitting the piston. So I actually retarded the intake by 20 degrees from its normal position. And the exhaust, I did the same thing, except I advanced it 20 degrees from its normal position. And as a result, I effectively lost 20 degrees on each side. The production version, the, I mean, a run of 10 is hardly a production version, but the version that will be purchasable will actually have those offset by 10 degrees so that you can run them closer. And the mid-range power is probably that, that lumpiness that you can kind of see in the graph right here at the bottom end hopefully that should go away and even if the lumpiness doesn't go away the whole thing will at least rise 5 10 maybe even as much as 15 horsepower but wouldn't hold my breath on that um yeah i mean that's so that was that was awesome right that proved out all my math and obviously obviously this is not my 350 wheel horsepower goal yet uh, the project ev where i'm planning on taking the dragon race project ev where i'm planning on taking the drag racing record for the naturally aspirated mr2s i have to make about 350 to the ground naturally aspirated now if we combine what i did here with um <laughs> in fact this motor i've been using this motor as a stand-in the actual motor that i ran is actually still in the car this one right here um you can see i've got it rather sloppily labeled double fxe this is the, the the one that i've been calling the the double atkinson motor this is out of a toyota camry hybrid and the only thing that i've done to it is notice it's a dual vvti valve cover so i added i took the valve cover off of a normal fe motor i took the valve uh, the cam carrier off of that and i took a second intake cam from the hybrid motor and i put it in the exhaust position and this one gave me 231 horsepower to the ground but more importantly that graph really really woke up at the top end um, i think what was happening with the uh just the plane engine the the regular 2ar fe you know tuned as much as i could get it the piston the lower compression the piston was just running away from the flame front going to 12 and a half to one really fixed that it really fixed the efficiency at the top of course the cams helped quite a bit too but i feel that with 12 to one pistons which is what i've got custom right now they're sitting in the shop and i'm just waiting to assemble the motor 
that should make the top end of the other graph. Um, hopefully the torque won't drop off quite as quick, which will make the horsepower continue to rise. Um, if that's the case, maybe we will try out that 85 or 8600 RPM. And um, of course, with the higher compression ratio, the whole curve bumped up um, about seven to eight percent, which is what what the math shows should happen anyway. So there was nothing unpredictable there. So hopefully that gets us to what a little over 250 horsepower there. And then the other lesson learned we're going to apply is uh, several several engines ago. Uh, we put it together a 1A RFE. In fact, that's where the intake that was on here came from. And that motor, so the 1AR is 2.7 liters. Now we did use reground cams, but the reground cams were smaller than what we ran in the video earlier. And that made 241 horsepower to the ground. So we've got the ability to kind of combine all that. That's I think the next motor I'm gonna build. So 2.7 liter crank, 12 to one compression ratio. And I'll probably even use slightly bigger cams. So these ones were 240 degrees. Um, I've got, I think the next step up I've got is 260 degrees. Um, I might even, I don't know, I'm on the fence. I might even run a, 240 on, a 260 on the intake and a 240 on the exhaust. I don't know, I haven't 100% made the decision. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do on that motor is check this out. So I got a call from the guy that was porting one of my heads and here is the stock versus ported flow. And it's not just ported, he also expanded the already huge 36 millimeter intake valves to 38. And again, the already huge 31 millimeter exhaust valves to uh, 31 and a half. Um, and with that combination, we got 15 to 20% more flow, and depending on exactly where in the band you're looking, but some pretty big gains. And in fact, because the gains are a lot bigger down low, that's part of the reason I'm thinking of staying with a shorter cam because we don't need to be as open before it starts flowing. So maybe we'll still run the, the number two grind that gave us the 240 horsepower. I don't know. I mean, I've got those, if, if you remember in that video that we did earlier, I've got 10 custom camshafts. So I'll just have to pick a set and run with it. Yeah, um, that's, I mean, that's that's nice and simple, but that's really all it took, so. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. I think this is where we're ending up for today. <laughs> let's, let's agree to call that 238 and uh, 195.